Welcome to the continuation of the review on magnetic flux and changes in magnetic flux. In the previous presentation, uh, we introduced the term uh, magnetic flux and talked about it as the uh, amount of field that passes through a loop. We said that if you change that magnetic flux through the loop, the loop responds electrically by producing a voltage in the loop, and if the uh, loop is a closed loop, current will begin to flow because of that, and we call that an induced current. And that's how far we got in the introduction. But now what we're interested in is we'd like to know the direction for that current flow. So in other words, does the current, when I change the magnetic flux, does the current go this way or this way in the loop? Another way to answer that same question would be is if I took out a section of the loop so that it was no longer conducting and I replaced this, well, let's say a terminal of a battery here and a terminal of a battery here and I created an electric potential between those two portions right there, the question would be which would be the positive terminal and which is the negative terminal. These are the same questions. If this was a positive terminal, for instance, we say by convention that the current would be flowing out in this direction and I would know my direction for my current. So that's essentially the question we're asking is the direction of our current flow or the positive or negative side of a battery if it were placed in the position to create that uh, induced voltage. Now the question is, how do we figure that out? So the basic idea goes something like this. And this is, seems like a very strange way to describe a uh, loop, the wants of a loop. But we're going to use it in uh, the traditional way of saying that the loop wants no change in flux. In other words, the loop resists any changes that you try to make in the flux of the loop, of the amount of field that's going through the loop. So the idea would be something like this. If in this first example, we tried to increase the amount of field that was going through the loop, that would look a little something like this. Let's say we were adding more field lines. So these would be new field lines that would be coming out in this direction. If I tried to add new field lines through the loop, the loop would respond by creating its own magnetic field going in the opposite direction. So it would want to do, it would want to generate magnetic field lines going this way. So this would be the magnetic field that the loop, I'll put a little L there, that the loop would produce to um, get rid of any change that was increased that was happening. So in an increase to the right would create an, a basically the loop wants to create a magnetic field going um, in the direction shown. So now we ask the question is which current would do that? The way we answer that is this is we use our right hand rule for current carrying wires and say that based on that rule if you were to grab, we sometimes call that the grab rule, if you were to grab a current carrying wire with your thumb in the direction of the current then the field lines would wrap in the direction of your fingers. Now you can kind of see the way I have drawn this here is if my current is in the direction of my thumb, I, and my fingers wrap around in the direction of the field that is created by that current, you can kind of see here that this would create the desired magnetic field this kind of um, magnetic field that is um, in induced to counteract the change that we had before. And that's how we get our direction for our current or our induced, induced current in this example. Now that change in the magnetic flux that goes through the loop could have been caused because in this case we added more field going to the right, but we could have changed the area of the loop or changed the angle that the loop makes. Any of the changes that we could make that could induce a voltage um, would basically, uh, what we want to do is the loop wants to counteract whatever that change is, and that's going to give you the direction for your current flow or your direction for your induced voltage. So just to give you another example, uh, in this case, like right here, let's say in this case, we wanted to do is the field lines started disappearing in this loop. So somehow, basically, these uh, the field lines, uh, the field started weakening 
inside the loop. Uh, what would the loop want to do to replace those field lines? Well, it would want to it would want to replace field lines in this direction. If these field lines started being taken away, the loop would want to replace them so there would be no change. And if we wanted to find out now what direction a current in the loop um, would take, you can kind of see here on the grab rule. If I happen to grab in the direction with my thumb in this direction in the loop, my fingers would wrap inside and come out in the direction of this replacement field, this field caused by my loop. And that would, in fact, do, it would counteract the loss of field that's in there. And now I would have the direction of my current, something like this. The direction of the current, if we were to replace portion of this, let's say cut this so that there was no, um, it couldn't conduct across here, and then put the two terminals of the battery, something like this, to generate our EMF, we would say the positive terminal was in this direction and the negative terminal was on this side over here. And that's essentially the uh, way that you find the direction for the induced current or the positive or negative side of the induced voltage um, based on changes in magnetic flux. Thanks for joining me for the tutorial.